Tesla recently announced an all new Model Y and the specs are gonna be crazy. In this video, we're gonna deep dive into the tech improvements of the new Model Y and I'm gonna predict what kind of range and performance gains we should see. The new Model Y will only be produced in Austin, Texas to start at their new factory and it's gonna incorporate a lot of new technology that Tesla has been working on. One of the biggest changes going into this new Model Y are the new 4680 cells. The big change with the 4680 cells is the volume and the size. So we're talking about a 46 millimeter diameter and an 80 millimeter height versus their current 2170 cell, which is only 21 millimeters in diameter and 70 millimeters in height. There's a lot of benefits from making a bigger cell. The main one being the casing of the cell remains the same width, but the volume increase is much bigger. So you're utilizing that volume for actual energy storage versus just casing. There's a ton of other details that I'm not gonna go into, but Tesla is quoting a 16% range increase coming from a 14% increase in energy density. The next big improvement going into this new Model Y is the structural battery pack. The structural battery pack utilizes the actual battery cells to create structural rigidity in the chassis. And so what that means is a lot less mass in the overall car because you're utilizing the cells to do two things. You're utilizing them to store energy and you're utilizing them to take loads that they otherwise wouldn't be taking and that creates structural rigidity in the car. And so now since the cells are actually taking load, you don't need to add in more mass to create more bracing and create that rigidity. The cells are doing that for you. So Tesla's quoting a 10% reduction in overall vehicle mass and a 14% range increase from this mass reduction. So what do these new improvements equate to? If you look at the figures that Tesla's quoted, you're talking about at least a 30% increase in range. And the current Model Y already has an EPA rating of 330 miles. And so that would bring this new Model Y over the 400 mile range mark. And so it begs the question, how would Tesla sell these two cars side by side when one is so much better? The Model Ys coming out of the Texas factory have over 100 miles more of range and much better tech all around. And these Fremont Model Ys are far inferior. So how are they gonna balance this out? Before you jump to any conclusions, let's look a little bit closer and we might find out that this isn't as big of a problem as you may have thought. The current Model Y has a pack size of 79.2 kilowatt hours, a pack level energy density of 165 watt hours per kilogram, and the total weight of the battery pack in the current Model Y is 480 kilograms. The curb weight of the Model Y is 2,004 kilograms, so that brings weight of the Model Y without a battery pack to 1,523 kilograms. And the current Model Y has an EPA rating of 318 miles, that's with the 20 inch wheels, not the 19 inch wheels. If you look at EPA data for the Model Y with the 20 inch wheels, they provide road load coefficients. And what road load coefficients tell you are the forces that act on a car while it drives. So you can calculate the forces acting on a car using the simple equation below. Forces acting on the car at a certain speed V are A plus BV plus CV squared. And if you wanna know how the EPA determines these road load coefficients, there's some in-depth information online. But what they do is something called a coast down test where they put the car in neutral and see how long it takes for the car to hit zero from a starting speed. And that tells them the exact forces that act on the car to slow it down. And so if you use the EPA figures, you can calculate the road load at certain speeds. So I'm gonna do an example here where I calculate road load at 60 miles an hour, and you plug in the number into the equation, and you see that you get 102 pounds of force or about 455 newtons acting to slow the car down at 60 miles an hour. And so this is great and really helpful. It tells us the forces that act on a car at any speed, but these A, B, and C coefficients are not very helpful or informative. So what I'm gonna do now is convert this EPA equation into a general physics equation that gives us a lot more detail and makes a lot more sense. So as I mentioned earlier, there's forces that act on a car to slow it down. There's the air resistance force and the rolling resistance force. The air resistance force is acting on the body of the car as it drives through the air. And the rolling resistance force is a friction force that happens between the road and the tire as it's moving over the surface. We can take the sum of these two forces and actually set it equal to our EPA equation. And so you can see below, we have force at a certain speed is equal to one half multiplied by rho, which is the density of air, multiplied by velocity squared, multiplied by the coefficient of drag, multiplied by the frontal area, plus the rolling resistance force, 
which is coefficient of rolling resistance multiplied by the normal force. So what we're gonna do is set this equal to our EPA equation. And at 60 miles an hour, we saw that it was 455 newtons of force acting on the car. And we know the basic specifications of the Model Y. It has a coefficient of drag of 0.23, an estimated frontal area of 2.6 square meters and a mass of 2,004 kilograms. So I'm going to make the unknown here the coefficient of rolling resistance. And if you do all the math, you get a coefficient of rolling resistance equal to 0 0.00934. And this value sounds spot on. It's really close to the 0 0.01 figure that a lot of people quote. Now we have a really helpful equation. So instead of just having an A, B, and C constant that we plug in, we don't really know what they mean. We have a very generic equation where you can actually change the mass of the vehicle. You could change the coefficient of drag and actually see how that impacts the overall forces on the car. And another cool thing we can do is convert this forces equation into a power equation. We use the formula power is equal to force times velocity. And so all we're doing is taking our forces equation and multiplying it by the velocity or how fast we're going. And we see that power consumption at any speed is our same equation just wrapped in a velocity. So you're multiplying all of your forces by your velocity to get how much power you're consuming. And so just to make this clear, I'll do a quick example at 60 miles an hour. So you do all the math and you see that you're using about seven kilowatts to overcome air resistance, and you're using about 5.1 kilowatts to overcome rolling resistance. Total power to overcome forces at 60 miles an hour is about 12.2 kilowatts. And what you can do with the power figure is actually convert it into a range figure. So if you take the capacity of your battery pack, in this case, 79.2 kilowatt hours, and divide by the power consumption at that speed, which is 12.2 kilowatts, you see that you could drive for about six and a half hours at a steady 60 miles an hour. And since you're driving for six and a half hours at 60 miles an hour, you know that you could do about 390 miles of driving. But this is all assuming 100% efficiency from the battery pack to the wheels, and this is not the case. We don't have an exact efficiency figure for the Tesla, but we know it's somewhere around 80%. And so if you apply that 80%, you get an actual range of 312 miles, which is very, very close to the EPA rating of 318 miles. And just to show you, I'm not pulling these numbers out of thin air. I did the exact same calculation for a Model 3 long range. So all we did is replace the frontal area with a smaller value, and we changed the mass to a Model 3 mass. And if you do all the numbers, you see that there's less power required for aerodynamics and a little bit less for rolling resistance. And you're using 10.9 kilowatts to overcome forces at 60 miles an hour. And that gives you about 7.24 hours of driving. And then you apply the 80% efficiency and you get 347 miles of projected range, which is right in between the 334 to 358 EPA rating on the Model 3, depending on the wheel setup. Cool, so now we have a really useful equation that'll tell us the exact power usage at any speed, and we can tweak parameters like mass, coefficient of drag, exactly how we want, and that'll tell us the changes we see in power requirements. So let's assume this new Model Y will have the exact same battery pack capacity as the current Model Y, 79.2 kilowatt hours. How much will this thing weigh? The cell level energy density of the 2170 cells is around 250 watt hours per kilogram. The energy density of the new 4680 cells is unknown, but it's gonna be at least 300 watt hours per kilogram. So I'm gonna use 300 as a nice safe number. If you just calculate the raw weight of the cells that have to go into the car, you see that the cell weight of the 2170s is about 343 kilograms and the cell weight of the 4680s is about 282 kilograms. Just from the cell weight alone, you're seeing about a 61 kilogram weight savings. But when it comes to mass reduction, the bigger factor is gonna be the structural battery pack. Tesla is quoting a 10% reduction in overall vehicle mass. So if you apply that to the Model Y, which weighs about 2000 kilograms, you're seeing a 200 kilogram or almost 500 pound weight savings. I played it safe here and I'm just gonna assume the 200 kilogram weight savings from the structural pack. I'm not even gonna incorporate the 4680 cells. And so we see that the new curb weight is 1,804 kilograms or 3,977 pounds. And that comes in lighter than a Model 3 long range. So you're talking about a compact SUV being lighter than the sedan with the exact same size battery pack and the exact same manufacturer, which is kind of crazy to think about. So how does stripping out that 200 kilograms convert to a range increase? Let's find out. Using our equation that we came up with earlier to figure out power at a certain speed, 
we're gonna plug in the figures with the new mass. So instead of using our 2004 kilogram figure, we're gonna use 1804, and you can see it in the equation in bold below. And we see that that brings down our rolling resistance power to 4.677 kilowatts, and our overall power needed to 11.716 kilowatts. Using the exact same methods as before, with the same size battery pack, you see that you could do 6.76 hours of driving, and at 60 miles an hour, that'll give you a projected range of 406 miles. This car is not 100% efficient. The new 4680 cells should provide more efficiency, but it's unclear exactly how much. So if we keep 80% efficiency, you see that's about 325 miles. If overall efficiency bumps to 85, which is probably pretty unlikely, we see 345 miles. And so we're only seeing a four to 6% range increase from pulling out all this weight. And that would translate to maybe a 350 mile EPA rating on the 19 inch wheel setup. And so the range increases we're seeing are not proportional to the mass we're pulling out. So I think the figures that Tesla's quoting are a little bit misleading. When they say a 10% range increase here or a 20% range increase here, I think they mean something a little bit different. I think what they're saying is if you incorporate this new technology, it'll save mass or increase efficiency efficiency. And if you replace that saved mass with more battery pack capacity, then you could achieve that much extra range. So in this example, you're saving 200 kilograms of mass. If you incorporated 200 kilograms more battery pack, then you could get that much percent increase in range. But by just pulling out mass, you're really not going to see these huge range increases that people have been talking about. And if you want to know why pulling out mass doesn't increase range by as much as you think it would, it's pretty simple when you just look at the forces equation. Since there's two forces acting on the car, air resistance and rolling resistance, we already went through all this. You can actually just look at the air resistance equation and see that it doesn't depend on the mass of the vehicle, but the air resistance equation is the dominant part of the equation. So at highway speeds, you're gonna spend much more energy overcoming air resistance than you are rolling resistance. So to put it in very clear terms, mass is only gonna impact the rolling resistance part of the equation, which is actually the smaller portion at most speeds. Let's talk about performance. So range isn't gonna increase that much by taking out mass, but performance definitely will, and this might be surprising to people. There's a really simple physics equations based on Newton's second law. It's force is equal to mass times acceleration, and if you rearrange that, you can say acceleration is equal to force over mass. Since we're reducing mass in the Model Y, we're going to increase acceleration by just that much. So decrease mass by 10%, increase acceleration by 10%. Let's see what this looks like. What you're about to see is a drag race simulator that uses all of the physics equations I just went through. It's based on forces that act on the car and forces that the car is producing. So what you see here is the new Texas Model Y, what we're calling it on top, and a traditional Model Y long range on bottom. And the Texas Model Y has 200 kilograms removed. And you can see that dropped the zero to 60 time by a full half second. So you're seeing around a four second flat zero to 60. And you're seeing a quarter mile time improvement of another half second or so. And those are massive gains by just removing 200 kilograms. Let's see what a performance version would look like. We have the exact same setup, but now with the performance model Y on top is the one with 200 kilograms removed. And we can see a three second flat zero to 60 time. And the quarter mile time is gonna be in the low 11s, 11.38 at 118 miles an hour. So you can see removing all that weight is actually creating huge performance gains. And so my opinions are that Tesla can basically make this new Model Y without some huge difference in range and they'll probably keep pack size the same or very close to the same. Their bigger concern is actually nerfing the power of this new Model Y. It'll be weird to have two of the same models where one is 200 kilograms lighter, has a half second better zero to 60 time and just feels a lot more nimble to drive. So I think they're gonna do some sort of nerfing, probably lower peak power output to make the cars feel as similar as possible until they can ramp up production and make sure all the new Model Ys have this technology. Let me know down below what you guys think Tesla's strategy is gonna be. How are they gonna incorporate this tech into new Model Ys while selling the same exact car with older tech? If you want to support me, you can on Patreon. I'll have a link in the description. You can also just subscribe and like the video. It's completely free and it helps me out. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.